So, can you tell us who you are and where you were on the 22nd of uh, February 2011? Uh, yes, my name is uh, Aurelien. I'm French and I arrived in Christchurch in December. Um, I've been working here for a few months and I've been through uh, a few earthquakes, especially on Boxing Days and a few aftershocks as well. And during the on the 22nd of February, I was uh, actually working in the fish factory and just uh, finishing working when the earthquake happened. So I was actually uh, in the changing room on the first floor of the factory. So I felt it pretty well, moved really, really strong. Felt like it felt like I was in the uh, like trampoline or, or like um, flippers. Like the ground was moving really, really strong, and then just a few minutes after we get out of the buildings, uh, we had again a few aftershocks, and they had all the muds coming out from the all the sediment coming out from the the grounds. So we couldn't walk on the streets. We have the bicycle. You couldn't. So you couldn't walk on the we street. We couldn't walk like we have this bicycle, and we just have been as quick as we can to grabbed the bicycles and left from the factory but just the time to get out of the factory and grab the bicycles it was no road anymore it was just sand and water all along the road so you could see some cars just like almost floating like couldn't get out anymore the cars were almost floating in the yeah, liquid so action. we had wow. to actually walk uh, into the muds and couldn't ride bicycle anymore and when we managed to get out of this area I was kind of back to normal, except you could see the cracks on the road and um, like lots of traffic jams and we were actually the, the quickest because people in the car were stopped and we had to go through the traffic by bicycle until, until we came to the city. And then I would say we were kind of the first people coming, able to go around the city and we were just riding bicycle in the city and just all the people came out of the buildings. Uh, you could see all the buildings which were already collapsed or really badly damaged and they were closing street after street like we were into the city and we were like I would say two blocks from the cathedral we have seen the cathedral just completely destroyed and after the police came and just start to close the streets after streets so we have to to get away from the city center so we just finished our round because we, at the beginning we were just uh, planning to see our second jobs. We were working in restaurants, but we couldn't manage to get into the restaurants, so it was closed anyway and damaged. And we could see how close was the restaurants to the the center, the episode. Um, my girlfriend's restaurant is uh, just on Cathedral Square. So just like on one side of the cathedral. That's where her restaurant is. Yeah, that's where her restaurant is. But we saw some of the people working with her. They just left the restaurant. They were not uh, injured, but they saw the cathedral uh, collapse. We got one of our friends stuck in the. He was um, cleaning the rooms in the hotel, and he was on the ninth floor and inside the elevator when the earthquake happened and he just got out the, of the elevator and just he saw the, um, the floor moving and the windows cracking and he saw the cathedral collapse and he just ran through the, um, uh, the stairs to get out of the building and so we just finished our run and we still felt a few aftershocks and you could see really strange feelings you could see the car on the parking just the cars like moving like up and down like someone were actually pushing them but the car was just moving by itself and even the, the public lights just shaking as well uh, there is no, no electricity anymore, no traffic lights on so just people naturally get out and wearing like this flashing gilet make the, the traffic you know Telling these people you could go or stop, make the other files going, just to organize. Just like I would say, half an hour after the earthquake, even less, people start to really uh, manage the things to help 
each other and trying to get the stuff back to normal and I mean at least help people to just get out of the city center so yeah we just I would say we just stay maybe an hour around the city center and we could do nothing so they just closed and let the professional get in to help people so we just came back to the house and then we start just waiting well the only thing we could do it was waiting so we've been waiting for a few days before we left Christchurch and during these few days we helped each other talk to the neighbor and see what we could do so the neighbor proposed us they have this um, what, petrol engine like um, generator like, yeah like a generator so they they proposed us if we they could provide us uh, uh, hot water if we need to to drink something or to recharge the phones or but anyway we have no electricity no water no the phone lines were the only things which were working so uh, hopefully we had we could uh, uh, call our uh, our relatives back home and they could call us as well so we have our friends coming to the house because they couldn't go to their apartment in the city center so we had few friends just have nothing, just like nothing. They have all the passports and clothes and jackets and, and everything in the apartment that they couldn't get to the apartment for I think five days. They stayed five days here waiting. They at least could get into the city center and ask to someone to get into the apartment to grab just the passports and just maybe one clothes and then leave. So we just stay in this house and uh, helping each other. We actually were staying outside of the house. As soon as we all the flatmates came back here, we just start to set up uh, like a basic camp outside of the house. A just what camp? Basic. A basic camp. camp. Like I thought, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, using the the dry woods, make the fire, make barbecue, taking all the stuff from the freezer and the fridge, and just try to start to cook all, all the foods we have, not to uh, waste it, and then we eat all together outside of the house and talking about what happened, our experiences and who was there and who wasn't there and what happened to you and all the people who haven't, was injured or not, and what we could do. We got this Canadian couple living with us, just uh, went to the end of the street helping this old woman. She was living alone in her in her house, and she was like, "Oh, I'm old now, and I'm not scared about the, the earthquake. If the earthquake has to take my life, uh, I don't mind. I want. Ju I just want to stay in my house anyway." So she ju they just helped her to get a few stuff and bring the stuff back in the place. And like like here, we just came here. It was so messy. The microwave fell down from the just uh, the fridge or the or the um, uh, cabbage just came down. The storage shelves, everything was uh, really messy. We just wait a bit, uh, living outside for a while before we start to uh, clean it up. And we actually waiting for the people who bring some uh, supplies and waters. Then. It was still this fear about an aftershock, so we were still um, like uh, warn warning up. Like if there is a shock, we were ready to get out of the the house. Uh, the first night was pretty scary. We still had lots of aftershocks after the big earthquake, so we actually slept uh, with the clothes on, even the shoes on. We made an emergency bag, just ready to grab and uh, quit the house as quick as possible. So we just, all the doors in the house were open. Um, you, you slept with the doors to the house yeah, open? Yeah, all, all the doors in the house were open. Um, maybe we just closed the, the doors in the front, but the back doors were open. We were just ready to, to run out. Uh, we just left, actually, we just stayed outside as long as we could until maybe midnight, until it was too cold and it was dark. So we were just talking together and... Uh, you know, passing time just uh, together, and then when it was time to go to bed, so we just went all to bed and slept uh, just with the clothes and the shoes, with the bag ready, 
and then in the morning I remember about 7.30 that thing, some things never happen usually when you're not working you just stay in bed but at this time everybody was awake and just walking around and we go to the neighbor I mean the neighbor came and, and, and asked us if he wants if we want some coffee because they have hot water so we we make uh, hot coffee for everyone in the house and we share it and so we just stay outside and waiting and there is no point there were no point to even get the bike and go around again because we couldn't go into the city even maybe two or three days after we try to get back into the city again for our friend to get the stuff back but there was no way to get inside the city it was really the army was there and they said yeah there is the professional teams from all around the world we had like i think japan team uh, american or canadian uh, they just came to help people to uh, the emergency was just to try to get the people out of the or the uh, collapsed building. How long did it take before they had the uh, the loos and the, the water? Um, I mean, I would say um, we still have the phones, but we spent the first night without electricity, and it came electricity came maybe the two days after, as if I remember well, and water came just before we left. I would say the earthquake happened on the Tuesday 22nd and I think the water came back on Friday but uh, now we are maybe three weeks after or one month after the earthquake and we still need to boil the water from the tap it's still not sure to drink the water from the tap so and now we just left the city and came back after one month and from outside the city seems it, it, was, it seems like it was back to normal, but when you approach the city center, the military are still there, there's a lot of traffic jam, um, you cannot drive uh, in the same road as before, like lots of roads are completely closed, you have to go all around the city if you want to go to this point, to this point. Um, there is still a lot of cracks on the roads, uh, on the buildings, um, like people seem to get back to normal, but you could see around that it's not really normal anymore. Uh, I would say that it's going to take ages before it's getting back to normal. Mm. I heard that uh, your girlfriend, Marie-Jean, uh, was cycling along Cashel Street uh, and had a very scary experience during an aftershock. Uh, Do you know about that? Yeah, she told me... Uh, actually, it was dear earthquake. She no, it was the earthquake itself, that's yeah, right. Yeah, it was the earthquake itself. Not the aftershock. Not the so she wasn't with you in the fish factory. Yeah, yeah. she finished, uh, I would say, maybe 15 minutes before us. So that's why she or she just left and she was on the way back home when the earthquake happened. So she was on the on the road when she had to stop because the ground were, were moving. She was bicycling, was she? She was bicycling yeah. and she saw a house collapse just next to her. So yeah, that was a pretty scary experience. What, was it hard to s to stand yeah, while it was going I said, on? As I said, it was really hard to stand. Even me, I was inside this, this it's not building, it's the factory on the first floor where in the changing room and it just felt like as, as we had lots of um, small earthquake or really uh, not strong or really deep one that you don't feel that much. So we start to get used to it in some ways. So that's why when this one happened, it started to shake, and then I thought it, w it was just a small earthquake as usual. I, 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 would not, I never expect it would be that big, so like as a reflex, you just make, whoa. And then I remember that I, it, it kept moving even better, and I couldn't even just um, stand on my feet. It just, I like, it's like the floor was throwing me on, on, the, on this wall, then back on the other wall, then I couldn't stand, I was like like really in, like in a trampoline and just moving and everything is shaking so I was almost like whoa whoa and screaming more and more even when it was more shocks and shocks um, I got uh, Ricardo, one of, uh, one of the guys working with us he was just next to me and I just remember the picture 
like his scary face, don't know what happened. Um, I feel terrible because my first reflex was just to get out of the building, so I just, he was still moving, I just passed the door and ran through the stairs and just ran to the exit door. But then Ricardo went to the, um, to the woman's changing room to help because it, it was a woman working with, her, with us. So he went to, to the changing room of the woman to help her. Uh, I didn't even uh, think about this. I, what I was just saying in my life, just running out of the buildings. And then when I've been running, I think I was maybe the almost the only one running. All the people were so scared that it was the downstairs, it's the um, kind of the restaurant, the place where all the people e were eating lunch. And so they were eating when the earthquake happened and so they stay sit and they just have time to stand up and the lights just came down and the, the, the some parts of the, the roof just uh, fell down and I, I, uh, maybe I was the second or the third one getting out of the buildings because the people doesn't have the reflex of leaving they're just so shocked they stay here and I was running and I saw Jan my friend and flatmate and he was out already outside and so he saw the, the whole scene from outside and I was inside and he saw the, um, the road making like a wave really it's like the, the road really hard where you're driving up on this one it's making us a wave then cracking and then all the sediments coming out from this and then we all went to the, this field waiting here that uh, everyone's getting out and everyone were shocked and some of the people were crying because we were in the changing room but it was a few people uh, still in the factory working where there is all this huge machinery and all this really heavy and huge machinery which is uh, yeah working usually 24 and 7 days for making the fish and dealing with, uh, with the frozen fish and it's getting boiling in the, in the oil so I was really scared that the huge boiler could just drop and all this really, really hot oil just go into the... but it doesn't happen. They said the machinery shake it really strong, so that was... That was how that how was long was that major? The yeah. earthquake, I think it has been for 8 seconds. It wasn't that... It, it seems like it has been for ages. But when you think about this, I just have time to just realized what happened and ran through the, the, the stairs and get out. So I, from really top would be 8 seconds. I wouldn't say more because, but it seems like it, it, it's so so long, but it's not. And even after the aftershocks, it's really really like 2 or 5 seconds maximum. But it's so strong that uh, yeah, it seems it's never going to stop. So where is the fish factory? It's in the... I don't remember exactly the name of the, the area. It's uh, from the city center, I would say, about 25 minutes by bicycle. South? Uh, south, yeah. Yeah, so it's like Sydney, Waltham, Wolston. Uh, Wolston, yeah. Wolston, Wolston. Okay. It's, about, it's in Wolston, close to Wolston. It's the I independent fishery uh, industry. Right. So you went from there, instead of coming, it would have been shorter for you to come straight home, wouldn't it? Instead of going to the city centre? Yeah, but we've been straight to the, to the house. Ah, it's okay. Actually, it's actually, we took, what was the name of the street? Uh, there is a really long street that... Ferry Road. Come on? Ferry Road. Ferry Road. We've been through Ferry Road, that was one. We left uh, the, 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 um, the fishery industry and we just went through Ferry Road and that's the place where the road was cracked and the sediments came out and it looks like there was like bumper, you know, to, to slow down the cars but it was naturally one. The cars had actually to drive on the side on the, on the walkway to pass this and come back on the road and we have to go by bicycle. Um, we just, we've been really uh, quicker than the cars and we usually take time to go um, to go by bicycle from the house to the place we work and come back. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes when we take time. But because the phones were not working and I didn't know about my girlfriend, what happened to her, so we just went as quick as we could 
to come back to the house because I knew she left before us and I thought she was in, inside the house when this earthquake happened. So that's why I was worried about but she was just on the road. So we finally met her here in the house and we saw the damage and we saw that people were okay. So we just left straight to the city. We just spent like five minutes in the house and go straight to the city. And then we saw all the damage in the city. So who's we? It's you and Jan? Yeah, it was um, Mary Jane, Jan and me. Uh, we just left, uh, left uh, the job, came to the house and go to the city. And yeah, there were only three of us. And yeah, we saw some people working with Mary Jane in the city center, just left from the restaurant. And we actually, it's when we came back here that we saw one of our friends who came back here because it was the only place he knew he could go because all, all the rest, all the, the, the houses, all the apartments in the city center was uh, locked. You couldn't, uh, you didn't have access to it. Yeah. So that's why we saw him here. And it's like everybody, all our flatmates came back to the house and people from their job came here as well. And it was like kind of the house which were not too far from the city center, still pretty close, but no, it was not part of the city center. So it w the we still have access to our house, so that's why we met here. Uh, all, all the flatmates were arrived, and some people from the age of came, and even some Elizabeth and Johan came here as well, so to see if we were, we were arrived. And so it's a good proof of uh, solidarity, I would mm. say. And, um, which restaurant was it that uh, you worked in a restaurant or Mary Jane worked in a restaurant in near uh, the square? We both worked. She is working in the. She was working in the um, Islander restaurant. It was the Camelot Hotel All restaurant, right. just on the just next to the X Base Hostel yeah. on Cathedral Square. Yeah. Um, we didn't have access to her restaurant. Yeah. It was already closed. The area was closed. But I was working in the Flying Burrito Brothers. It's on the corner of uh, New Regent Street and uh, Arma Street, and we had access to the to this part, which now uh, just uh, a few few minutes, few hours after the earthquake, you couldn't have access to this place anymore. But we were kind of the first people getting to the city center after the earthquake, so we saw actually like the um, New Regent Street where this tramway is coming, and. Uh, I was I was I was thinking at this time I hope there were no tramway coming during the earthquake because uh, the railway was just destroyed the road was just like like a volcano just completely cracked and broken and and so even the car even the car couldn't go on this road anymore even a car yeah even much a car less a train yeah. you would need a four wheel drive if you want to pass this road wow but uh, my reason wasn't too badly damaged. I already asked them before when I started work there and they said they have really big double wall which were really strong and I haven't seen any cracks or too much damage just like to say how much this this uh, earthquake was strong it's on, on the first earthquake in September they said they didn't have any problem nothing really moved but on this one I saw this big wall it was this wall um, which the bar were against, so it was all the bottle in on the wall, and I saw through the windows that all the bottles just fell down from the wall and just smashed all the glasses on the bar. So it looks messy, but after when you see the reason on the tables were okay, and the, even the the glasses outside were all right. That's which is not the case for every building. Then when we went around all around, you could see big buildings which is supposed to be the glasses from the top to the bottom and there were no glasses anymore. All the glasses collapsed. Uh, it's like the windows fell out or Yeah, or yeah, I can't remember the name of this street. It's, it's all next to the small river on the... Along the Avon. Almost at the end of uh, Cashel Street on the other side. So it's either Oxford Terrace or yeah, Cambridge Terrace. Yeah, Oxford Terrace. There was a yeah. building with the... And you could see the elevator. It's supposed to be behind the glasses. Uh, yeah. The glasses just broke them and so you could see the elevator. You mean the one across the street from the, the library? Uh, I think it's not the same road as the library, it's the road after. 
Uh, I'm not sure I can remember exactly now, but uh, yeah, we saw so many damaged buildings. Were you able to help anybody? Did you, were the people still pulling people um, out of cars and out no, of buildings? They were not they're just the people were just outside already and they uh, tried to evacuate the city center. So even if we tried to get in, we just actually have been able to go around and not go through the city center. So they were just saying, no, don't go there, it's too dangerous now. You could see some uh, smokes and fires as well. So uh, look, we, we, we saw pretty scary picture as well. We saw some people at maybe the fifth or the tenth floors and the windows and waiting for some help because they couldn't have any access to the stairs, I suppose. Wow. So, so they were just waiting. They're just making, well, we arrived, but we're waiting for the, the people to cruise when it happened. So we saw after the helicopters coming and, and try to get the people out of the buildings because they didn't know what's going on. And after the, with the aftershocks, you don't know if it's going to collapse or not. So they were just waiting to be evacuating. It might be the Forsyth Bar building, the uh, uh, stairwell collapsed. and. And I heard that that ha happened also in the Clarendon Towers. A couple of the tall buildings, the stairwells collapsed in front oh of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I we had the TV pretty late. I mean, after we had in after we had electricity, TV came back, so we could see exactly how damaged was the city center. Because even us living in Croatia, that we saw the city center was closed, so we couldn't see really how bad was the damage. And then we saw on TV with the helicopter that you really see how badly the city was uh, damaged. How did you get your news for the first 48 hours before the electricity came back on? Um, I remember walking to the neighbor and um, they were actually turning the cars on and listening to the radio and trying to know what's going on and how long it's going to take to fix everything. and. But then more the time we were spending and more we were thinking it's really, really, really bad. Never never happened like this before, so it's going to take a lot of time. And people who've been through the earthquake in September, they said that it took time to get back to normal. So this time it's going to take ages to get back to normal. So they said, yeah, we better get prepared to... Uh, to live for a while like this. So we were at the beginning just lis trying to listen to radio, so just trying to find anything which were not working on electricity and more on battery and look for battery and, and so people who got the car just we were just going on the street and people just uh, yeah turned up the radio and just li listening the radio what, what they were saying. And then we get back electricity. We got electricity back and the T V and so I heard that some of the news that you got at that time uh, was you got on the telephone from, from parents and relatives overseas. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, we actually got uh, the first news from our parents, uh, which were like far, far away back home. They had the internet and they could see what was going on, how many people expecting to be dead or, or missing. And uh, yeah, they, had, they actually gave us the first news about the earthquake, what happened here, and they said the city center would be closed for at least one week, which was the first news we had. Um, then they said, no, it's going to be much worse, and that's how they... they that was a good thing that the phone were still working, because they... The phone kept ringing even during the night. We had these uh, our parents. They were, if it wasn't as it was our flatmates' parents who were calling to see or to just give news and what they heard about. And so yeah, that was the strange thing that we had news about our parents, which are which were a lot like far, far away. So your parents in France yeah. were giving you news about what was happening in Christchurch. Yes, yeah, even like everyone in Europe had news about what was going on in Christchurch, but we were leaving Christchurch and we didn't have any news about. And just after electricity came back, we knew exactly what was going on. But for the first 48 hours, just our parents like told us and kept calling to tell us what was going on and. What you should do, that's my, actually, our parents tell us that 
they give us the advice to make an emergency bags and to be ready just to leave the house or leave the city and they, they, they said it's better to leave the city for a few days just waiting the things like getting back to normal and so that's how we know that. And how long were you gone for before you came back? Uh, one month. And how do you find the, how do you feel the cleanup has gone since what you've seen the destruction to now? Well, um, we still don't have any access to the city center, so I, I couldn't say uh, if there's been cleaned up or rebuilt or what, I, what we've seen so far from the, um, the suburbs and outside. That's, uh, like I said, getting back to normal uh, because people, we saw people getting out of school or getting out of work and going to buy some stuff in packing saves or countdowns and which was not possible like two, 48 hours after the earthquake, uh, the big countdown and the big pack and save in the city center, they were still closed and, and and we even been we've been through the city center by bicycle like two days after, and we only see um, kind of fishing ships open. It was kind of the only things open around that we saw. Otherwise, you you have to go outside of the the city and go on the suburbs to see something to find something open. So now I would say lots of stuff we open, but. Uh, still have lots of buildings which are completely damaged so you, you don't forget that thing, these things happen you as soon as you get back to Christchurch you still see the the kind of scars of the earthquakes in the in the city could you imagine living in Christchurch again um, well for me I uh, would be able to live here again even through the fact that I think this house is really strong, so I, I don't mind living here. It's like scary because it's shaking sometimes for the aftershocks. Um, but the most difficult part would be back to working in some places that you don't know if it's really strong or not, that if there is an earthquake, you don't know. And if it's just sometimes there is just a big bus of trucks coming on the road and it's made the windows shaking and you always thinking about, oh, is it an earthquake, an aftershock, do I have to move, do I have to get up or stay here, or so it's always in your mind. And even we had this earthquake in, on Boxing Day, and uh, it was the same mechanism, like uh, we, we feel the aftershocks and fear about this, but then one week passed, then two weeks, and three weeks uh, start to be back to normal, there is still a few uh, aftershocks, but you you start to get used to it, so you don't pay attention. And then the bigger swag happen, and then it's even worse because it's gonna take like maybe for the people who used to be here, it's gonna take I mean at least a year or a few years before really forget uh, and not think about this every single times the the floor is moving or the, the big noise is coming. Because the, even the, I would say the, the most scariest things was during the night when everything is quiet, there is no light, nothing, and you could hear the sounds of the earthquake before it's moving. You, you can hear the ground moving and then it's coming, the waves coming and, and into the walls and then the house is shaking. But first you hear the, the sound of the earthquake. And then I remember I saw the lights coming up. That's when I realized the electricity was back. But yeah, I think it's going to take a long time before uh, you can forget this or, or get through this and going back to a normal life. And the house you lived in at the time, this house, which uh, I'll just quickly show there's still some earthquake damage, cracks. Um, nothing dramatic, but yeah, earthquake came through. Um, the um, the house has seven bedrooms, uh, and some people there were couples in some of the rooms and single people. Out of those seven rooms, do you know how many people stayed in the house? Like for a, you know. Uh, for the first night, everybody slept with the clothes on and the shoes on. 
uh, one of my friends just left to a room outside, sleeping uh, in the in one of our, our other friends' um, uh, house, just outside there because it was safer. He doesn't want to sleep in, in the house anymore. And yeah, people just they spend we spend like two nights more than we left, and most of the people that's what they done. I think we've been. Yeah, we've been two couples leaving, maybe spending two nights, three nights. We spent three nights more after the earthquake. Uh, we had um, our friend who just left maybe two nights after. He couldn't stand staying here anymore, just left to uh, Wellington. Uh, just rent the car as quick as possible. They just been from here by bicycle to the airport and, and renting a car, coming back here, packing up everything and just left and just leave. And we spent three nights more than, so that makes about five of us leaving three days after the earthquake. Then we have um, our friend just um, left uh, on Sunday, so that makes about uh, four, five, five, five days after, just left. So uh, about almost everyone left after, within the seven days after the earthquake. Uh, yeah and especially people who lost their job. Uh, we still have this house, but uh, some of, of our friends, they lost their jobs and the house. They have no place to go. They st still have to wait to get their stuff back. And they just have to wait. That was the most difficult part, just waiting. You have nothing to do and just waiting the things uh, get better. Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, Mary Jane? Uh, Mary Jane's experience cycling and seeing the, the house fall down in front of her when the earthquake hit. So I understand that house is built right on the street so that the bricks would have fallen sort of right in front of her. That must have been extremely scary. Well, I haven't seen it for myself. Did she talk to you about it at all? Well, she told me it's just that she has to stop bicycling because she couldn't stand on the bike anymore and see the the house on the side or in front of her, I don't know, somewhere on the on the side of the street just collapsed and the other house just moving. But you could see even in, inside this house that the doorway was not on the right uh, shape as before. You couldn't actually, you couldn't open our door. We have to smash the doors because it was locked that the doorway was on the side and not, uh, not in the right shape. And then what that was happened for most of the houses all around. So you had to break your door down to get. Into yeah, the we room. had to do yeah. to get the stuff back because it's like uh, you don't really think uh, properly. You just want to get inside into the room, get your stuff, and be ready to leave as soon as you can. So it was just like in an emergency thinking. We just have to get in, pack everything, just check if everything was good. And there were still these these things in, in in your mind that it could be a fire as well. That you don't want to be a fire if there is some electronic stuff inside the room or inside the house. Just there is maybe the gas could come up and uh, like we had Caroline, one of our flatmates. The microwave almost killed her. The microwave was on the on the fridge and she was cooking and the microwave just fell down and she just had time to step aside and the microwave just fell next to her. And when we came back in the kitchen, it was all her meal, like a salad uh, with a lot of vegetables inside. And she was just finishing cooking. She was almost about to eat it and put the dressing and the earthquake happened and she just dropped. So when uh. we came back into the kitchen, we got all the dressing into the kitchen with the, with the microwaves on the floor and the pasta and the salad. And uh, so much messy that unbelievable. So you 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 when you see this picture, you can imagine that uh, you just run away. Don't take time to clean it up. You just leave.